I've seen, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here, and you're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Hello, I'm Scott Bogey from Combat Sports UK, here with Aidan Stephen. How are you doing today? I'm good, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. We're here because of Slade next weekend. You have got a fight against Alexander Luf in the Cage Warriors 174 as part of the Prize Fighter Tournament. You looking forward to that? Can't wait. I just wish it was tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sick of all the waiting. Well, I'll be here soon enough. And how how are you thinking of coming up to this tournament? Are you excited? Are you nervous? I just can't wait. I just <laughs> I want to get in there, show everyone what I'm capable of, and you know, get that money, exactly, and get that title shot. Exactly, that is the price for being able to get, win this tournament is the bonus as well as getting that title shot, and. How do you feel that the champion has came out and said he is wanting Luf to win this? Did that give you just extra motivation to prove him wrong? I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't care. I'll uh, I'll beat Luf and then I'll beat whoever wins out of the other semi-final and then I'll beat Liam in September. I'll be a champion. So is that when the fight is made to happen in September? Yes. So the, what is it? Guessing it's the card. Is it Manchester? Yes. Now is it meant to be the one on the unplugged event, or is it one seventy eight? I haven't been told. I just got told the winner would fight for the title in September. That's completely fine. So, and how has the training camp been for this fight? Because obviously you're not just preparing for one guy. You're having to prepare for potentially five guys because anyone could come in even in the reserve fight? Uh, I haven't changed too much up in the training camps, really. I've been reading a lot of um, sports psychology books and, you know, athletes that change change their um, camps up um, don't tend to do as well. So we keep, tend to keep the camps the same. Obviously, we add different things here and there each time, but um, it's still the same hard intensity that every fight camps, you know, go and... Um, yeah, I just, I just can't wait. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Been, it's been a long, it's been a long eight weeks, and it's been a very hard, uh, uh, hard, tough eight weeks as well. But I'm ready to, you know, just show everyone what I'm capable of, and I think this is the perfect fight to do it. And do you think with your of your first opponent, Luth, do you think that he's just going to be outclassed in this fight? He's only had one fight in Cage Warriors, which was against Luke Riley, and it was a defeat. Do you think just Cage Warriors is just too big of a step up and you'll be able to show your class? Um, Not at all. He's actually a very, very good fighter. Um, He came close to, you know, winning and stopping Riley a few times. He's uh, you know, probably came the closest to doing it. Riley's been dropped a few times in his last few fights now. So, um, you know, but again, Alexander just he thrives in that kind of war. I watched his last fight um, in Sweden and, you know, he was actually very technical. So he's not, don't, no, people can't be um, underestimating him. I'm certainly not underestimating him. I know what he's capable of. I know what he's good at. And, um, you know, we've worked very hard this fight camp to to um, strategize and, you know, we'll um, take advantage of where we think we can. But, no, I don't think I saw at all. I think he's probably between, well, when I saw the first six that were announced, I thought me and him would probably be the in the final. But I face him in the semi now. No, exact, exactly. It would be a great final to even just witness as well. Was there anyone you were looking to have in the final once you are able to get past Luth? Or are you just going to be able to just take it whoever it is? I am. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to look at it that way. You know what I mean? I'm just going to yeah. see what happens on the night. Um, I've, Wesley Myers, someone I've been watching for a long time. 
he's an excellent fighter. Um, a fight that I've always wanted. But for, well, when I was at um, featherweight, I just thought we would never, ever fight. But, um, you know, here we are. So every single person in the comp in the tournaments a brilliant fighter. Not got a single, you know, negative to say about anyone that's in it. And then obviously the champion, Liam, you know, he's an excellent fighter himself. Um, but, you know, it's very exciting that these are the fights that I can look forward to in the future. Yeah, exactly. And with Wesley, he's got extra motivation in this tournament because there was, there's two guys he has faced already. So he is looking to get that revenge. Going into this fight, it is just a week on before UFC Manchester. And with the fight being on the UFC Fight Pass, do you think that brings more attention to the to this event? Yeah, one hundred percent. And the fact that it's prize fighter, it's going to bring you know massive attention. Um, I've I visualized this fight, you know, a hundred times in my head. I visualized the event. I know, I know myself what's going to happen. So, you know, let's just let's just get in there. And, That'd be awesome. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah. It's not a case of getting over and done with. It's just, you know, fight camp sometimes is a bit mentally draining, especially with like working a full time job as well. You know, you just yeah. wish it was. And um, when I win the tournament, fight Liam in September, I'm looking for my first title defense in November. I want a quick turnaround as well. And um, closer to the year with four fights and a gold strap. $50,000. That is everyone's <laughs> goal. And last time out, you were fighting at Cage Wars 171. How was that to fight in your home, in your home country? It was amazing. It was the first time I'd actually fought in Scotland in five years. So the place was deafening. Scottish fans bring it every time. A little bit guided to say a little bit. I'm, Extremely glad that I'm not going to be fighting on the Scotland card in September. But that being said, you know, if the fans turn up the way they did at 171, then they'll probably be back the uh, start of next year as well. Exactly. It was a great atmosphere at 171. The fans brought it. The event was good. Sadly, the main event and the co-main wasn't how Scotland planned it. But they are both of them are back on the card next time. Hopefully they are able to get the victories. Going yeah. going to wrap your brain in just a little bit, about I think it was like eleven years ago, you were able to clinch your first title. How was that feeling to get that title? And that has that inspired you to get that title in Cave Warriors even further? At the time it meant everything. Like um I always wanted to be a champion, but when you've been in this game for as long as I have, titles are just titles sometimes. Um, you know, I'm I'm in this to just constantly improve every day, just constantly get better, constantly looking for new challenges. So, you know, titles are always nice. Um, but at the same time, it's it's not it's not everything in fighting. You've got to look at some of the the Best people in the UFC have never gone on to win a title. Poire, Florian. Yeah. You know, you can, there's loads of people, but um, this, the, especially uh, this last year, um, that Cage Warriors title has really eluded me and something that I've, I think about all the time. And, you know, I won't be happy until I'm, I'm champion. <laughs> like, Everyone's saying about the money. I'm, I really don't care about this money just now. I just want that belt. I just want to be number one. And, um, you know, I have to go through two fights and one night next week to, to get that shot. And then you know, you know, I'm coming for that title. Yeah, exactly. And you obviously have a, you only have a great chance of getting that title. You touched on it a little bit earlier on that you ha were a featherweight. You have also competed at lightweight. Do you think bantamweight is now your set weight, your natural weight class? Yeah, I that last um, 
that show in Scotland, I was cutting less weight than anyone. You know what I mean? I've done yeah. everything by the book. I've got a nutritionist, shout out to Liam. Um, and, you know, I was just super strict with my training, everything done properly. I um, definitely think that, you know, I've got a few years left in Bantamweight and, you know what I mean? And then after yeah. that, who knows? I might move back up to featherweight and go for a title run there as well. You've definitely got the skills to do it and I can't wait to watch you get win that Bantamweight prize fighter tournament next weekend and then go on to win that title. If you haven't already got tickets for this event, make sure you go and purchase them. It is a great evening. Cage Warriors put on great shows. If you haven't already, make sure you go and watch it on the UFC Fight Pass. Hayden, thank you for coming on. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, my man.